Hello everybody. Uh, we are on our way almost up to Mount Tunati. Mount Tunati is the same height as the base camp of Mount Everest. Uh, mountain climbing. Yes. Man, it's hard. And uh, you have to have somebody there to encourage you. Somebody to say you can do it. Somebody to say keep going. A lot of times, you gotta have somebody in front of you and to help you feel better, somebody behind you. Well, that's how it is with missions too. A lot of times you need somebody in front of you. That's where your team comes in. And you need somebody behind you. That's where the prayer support and the financial help comes in. Because when you start reaching altitudes like this, you just want to stop. But, gotta keep going. Come on. Back at our apartment now, overlooking Cochabamba, this beautiful city that we now call home. And if you look up in the distance, you can see the mountain range and towering over everything, Mount Tunati, which is the mountain that we climbed. Well, in all honesty, and to be truthful, I have to say, you can see Mount Tunati, the mountain that Denise climbed. Now, I say that Denise climbed because I only made it to about 16,000 feet, and then I started passing out from oxygen deprivation. Now, Denise, being the incredigal that she is, she made it all the way to the top. I had to go down, well, go down or die, and I decided to go down. Uh, I've had people ask me, you know, do you feel bad that Denise made it and you couldn't? And my first answer is, I've known for 26 years she's more of a man than me. But in all honesty, no, I, I thought it was great. I was proud of her. And not only that, but I made it to 16,000 feet. How many people do you know that have climbed up to 16,000 feet? I didn't make it all the way, but I made it a lot farther than I would have if I had stayed home. You know, that's how it's been on the mission field. In our first three years, there's been a lot of obstacles that we, well, we couldn't overcome. There were things that we wanted to do and we couldn't, that we tried to do and we failed. But there were things that we did. And we were way more successful because we tried than not trying at all. And what I'm learning is the journey is where the joy is. Now the Bible says that we should let another man praise us and not praise ourselves. Yet, at the same time, we feel accountable to our supporting churches, to our prayer partners, to you, to report what God has done in and through our ministry here. Now God gets all the glory, but we just gotta tell you what he's done. God has taught us to do what I affectionately call emergent ministries. And as a matter of fact, this has been so important, we're actually gonna be doing fundraising in the States for this. And emergent ministries are opportunities to do good that we didn't plan on doing. It's opportunities to participate in ministries that were not part of our core plan, our core goals. But we want to be like Jesus. You know, Jesus said, for this reason I was born, when he was going to Calvary. And yet, on the way, on the journey to Calvary, he would stop and he would help those in need. We've been able, because of these emergent ministries, to actually put clothes on the back of the poor people. We've been able to minister to those that are in jail, to help orphans, to feed the hungry, to minister to drug addicts and the prostitutes. We've been able to purchase sound equipment for different ministries, to donate money to other organizations, to help provide housing and even food for local pastors that are, are living just below the poverty line. Now, along with all the various emergent ministries, we've also focused on the core reason we're here, helping Bolivian church leaders know God better and love Him more. And in doing that, the focus has been our teaching ministry. Now, I've been able to teach at the local evangelical seminary here for two semesters, teaching on the doctrine of salvation and then on the Gospels, the uh, Los Evangelios, and helping people realize what it means to have a message of grace. We've really had a fantastic mentoring ministry and mentoring 11 people one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, one thing that's really been exciting is I've been able to mentor three different Bolivian missionaries, two of which have gone to the mission field and one of which is now serving here in Cochabamba. 
Along with that, I've also mentored three or four North American missionaries. And what they do is I meet with them, and we talk, and we train, and we discuss. And then they go to different cities in Bolivia, and they equip and train the church there. So there's multiplication of ministry going on. Speaking of multiplication of ministry, John Maxwell has an incredible curriculum called Equip, and it's part of the Million Leader Mandate. And I've been privileged for two years to meet on Saturdays and to equip church leaders through John Maxwell's mentoring ministry. We've also been able to preach, and 34 different times in the last three years, I've had the joy of preaching, which is really my passion. And along with the preaching, we've also done conferences. Our conferences have covered stuff such as marriage and family. We've helped people with finances. We've helped people with parenting. We've done conferences on leadership and on church growth and on ministry topics. One of the things that I really enjoyed the most is I was invited to be the guest speaker at a school for pastors. And there were about 35 pastors there. And for four hours a week, I was able to give them skills, not focusing on theology or doctrine, but on skills. Things such as the essentials of communication, how to communicate creatively, uh, how to communicate in the manner that Jesus did, how to set and reach your goals, how to strategically plan, how to equip a team, skill sets that then they would be so excited and they would leave every Sunday with the desire to implement what they had learned. And in effect, I was helping 35 churches a week. That really has been one of the most enjoyable ministries that I've had here. Now, this is not an exhaustive list of what God has done, but it's just a quick perusal off the top of our head of the ministry events that we've been able to participate in here. But really, it wasn't us. It was you through us, or honestly, it was God through you, through us. Because everything that we have done, you have done. You are the ones that have prayed for us. You are the ones that have underwritten our ministry. It has been your financial gifts that have allowed us to be here. So as we finish up our first term on the mission field, three years of spiritual mountain climbing, I just want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you because it has been your investment in the kingdom of God through us that has enabled us to impact lives here in Bolivia. When we're back in the States on home assignment, it's our desire to see and to hug and face to face to just say thank you to as many of you as we possibly can. Your support really is making a difference. God bless you.